I think we're here to see if we can grow in the way we respond to suffering. Ailey Wiesel, who reminds us not to forget the Holocaust, he said, you can hold yourself back from the suffering. This is something you're free to do. But perhaps precisely this holding back is the only suffering you might be able to avoid. That often the way in which you and I are dealing with the suffering in the world is creating more suffering for ourselves and for other people as well. If you look around here, we are primarily a white middle class group. Now, um, most of us probably aren't busy thinking of ourselves as white. But we are nevertheless white. And if you and I are going to reach out to other human beings, we have to be open and comfortable and healthy in the way in which we reach across ethnic and racial lines. Tonight, when we open the microphone, I'd like to ask us to practice listening, to observe the way the mind responds to somebody's story, and how it responds with judgment, with some way of distancing itself. Let's practice listening and watching our own reactions to the things we hear and see. And let's see if we can quiet down enough to understand the way in which we are being in the presence of suffering. Hi, my name is Michael, and I come specifically uh, here to focus my uh, volunteer work with the homeless. And I come as a recovering alcoholic who used to live on the street. And how do you uh, interact with people on the street? Who are they? Who is a street person? Mm. Is it just some bum? Or is it you and I? When I was on the street for my birthday, uh, a wonderful poet called Bob Randolph, I'll keep this very brief, I know there are many of us, um, came and read a poem to me. And I'd like very briefly to read it to you. It's called, What Can We Learn From the Homeless? Imagine suddenly you were homeless. How would you manage? How would you get through the day when now you have 18 cents and it's 6 a.m.? Can you smile at anyone? Can you say a cheery word to anyone? Can you eat a balanced diet? Can you write a love letter? Can you call home? What would you do if your one blanket is stolen? Can you go to the toilet? How do you shave or change your socks or handle diarrhea or bandage your finger? Or say hello to someone lovely you'd like to know? Would you be alive tomorrow? How do you have dignity? How do you have beauty? These last I know, you have dignity and beauty. The dignity of survival, the beauty of sharing a bottle of wine is shared with those whose pennies helped pay for it, to still their hurt, to still yours. Your child years, your beautiful years, your survival years, all these tell of dignity. They tell of your spirit, though soiled now. Below the layer, your beauty remains in the tree rings of your life. The rich years, the survival years. It is the tree of your life. That's from Bob Randolph. My name is Kathleen, and I had an extremely incredible opportunity to go and work with the prisoners in San Quentin. And what I was faced with was my own stereotyped conception of what these men were represented at criminals and um, minorities and just a whole set of standards and, and boundaries. Before there was any contact between them and me, I felt real separate and very aware of my fears and my preconceived notions about who they were. And the minute I started asking them to share and listening 
just listening, uh, all of those stereotypes just sort of vanished. And the experience for me is was just uh, such a change in in how I am with people and and what I take with me to people. And last week's whole subject about minorities and and what separates us. It's just a matter of being with someone and allowing them to to share who they are regardless of the situation that they're doing time or they have done something wrong. And it was uh, it was really quite a uh, an amazing experience. What hurts most? What is the nature of the suffering that is moving you most deeply at this moment. Let's just get the mosaic of it all, if we can. What is the suffering that calls to you, that hurts? The suffering of children. Death of loved ones. My dad is an alcoholic. The rape of the hearth. Learning of our slavery that was a long time ago. Mm. Hunger in the world of plenty. The way we lash out at each other because we're suffering ourselves. I think the reason I, I fear suffering um, is because I have the privilege of being a member of a very privileged generation in a very privileged country. And uh, I'm unaccustomed to suffering. My adolescent years were spent in what almost everyone here would probably call poverty. But I can remember only one meal where I almost didn't have enough to eat. I know there's countries all over the world where every meal means they had not enough to eat. So I try to keep that in mind and understanding that um, a reality of life is that there is a lot of suffering around. I can't tell you I've done a lot (laughs) to relieve that suffering, but I'm starting. That's why I'm here. Mm. Thank you. Many of us in this room could say exactly that same thing. And we've got to listen to hear where we feel guilty and that makes us feel better or where we say, well, I've got a lot of work to do, or where we say, the cost of my being part of a socioeconomic group and protecting my space, it's costing me more than it's worth. It's the words of a Salvadoran peasant woman. I worked on the hacienda over there, and I would have to feed the dogs bowls of meat and bowls of milk every morning and I could never put those things on the table for my children. When my children were ill, they died with a nod of sympathy from the landlord. But when those dogs were ill, I took them to the veterinarian in Xochitoto. You will never understand violence or nonviolence, she said, until you understand the violence to the spirit that happens from watching your own children die of malnutrition. I never have had any contact with people that have been suffering. I mean, I've, 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 you know, participated in community service, but it's always I've always distanced myself from other people. I've um, worked in the peace movement. I've 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 helped in environmental projects, but I've always kept myself away from from the people that really need me and it, it it's hard to know what's keeping me away or, or guilt or 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 just just you know it's a new thing it's it's a really new thing for me and I, I hear all these people dealing with AIDS patients and and uh, people dying and it, it just scares me and but I, I, I do I do want to break through it there's a timing in the process And if you try to do it before you're ready, you do some violence to everybody involved because you get ahead of yourself. Your head gets ahead of your heart. 
and you close down. So trust the process that's going on. Trust that you're caring about the earth and you're caring about things and just keep qu that quality of the compassion of the heart and that just what you're saying now, that's the doorway to the next process. Don't make it into a big thing. It's just another thing. It's just another thing. Because you're dealing with lots of suffering all the time. Family, friends, society, uh, the political oppression, all the news, you're dealing with it all the time, all the time. So it's not like you go get a dying person, you know, rent a dying person, and then suddenly you're going to know suffering. It's, you know, you can't, it can't, it's not a hype like that. Just let yourself open, to, keep opening your heart and loving people more and more, and you'll become very aware of their suffering. Suffering is not so much an invitation to minister or to be the alleviator of suffering as an opportunity for solidarity and a solidarity, a connection that would not otherwise have happened. And I bet a lot of you have experienced that in your work, that what people are most grateful for, have you noticed, is not that you're alleviating their pain, but that you're noticing it or that you're receiving it or that you're being there with them.